Hello and welcome to Wheels Boy. As the world's largest automotive market, China is also the most important market for some of the world's largest automakers. That includes Volkswagen. Perhaps that's why they chose the Chinese auto market to debut this, the VW ID6. You've heard of the ID4? Well, meet its much larger brother. But here's the thing. This car is very unlikely to remain a China market only model for very long. So we thought we'd give you guys a first glimpse. Here we go. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Pricing for the ID6 starts at $37,500 US dollars for the pure trim level, rising to over $52,000 US dollars for the top spec prime version featured in this video. For comparison, the smaller ID4 starts at $31,000 US dollars and tops out around $43,000 US dollars here in the Chinese market. One area where we know the ID6 and the ID4 will not differ over much is in terms of the exterior styling. Here on the front end, we can see some minor differences in terms of the headlight design with larger ones here, as well as some more pronounced grille openings lower down. I should mention that there are two actual versions of the ID6 available here in the Chinese market. The ID6X, which is produced by the SAIC Volkswagen joint venture company, that's the one we're driving today, and then the ID6 Cross, which is made by FAW Volkswagen, another joint venture partner here uh, with Volkswagen in the Chinese market. Cross, by the way, is spelled with two Zs because apparently the marketing department at FAW Volkswagen is made up of teenagers from the 90s. Either way, what you need to know is that the only difference between the two versions is some small, small changes to the exterior styling. Other than that, they have the exact same batteries and electric motors and chassis underneath. The ID6 is a full 30 centimeters or 11.8 inches longer than the ID4, giving it room for a third row. Buyers can choose between six and seven seat versions of the car. Personally, I think the ID6 wears that extra length quite well in terms of design. This particular car we're driving today is a prime, top of the line version, and it comes in this nice, I don't know, gold, almost pewter color. It's understated and it's actually quite nice, but personally, I prefer to see it in some bolder colors, like the purple that it was launched in. That is also accompanied by an offset of a white roof in that car. And then I think the darker color also helps the white badges on the back to really pop. Down below, we have some nice 21 inch wheels. Here on the rear end, the styling is much like the front end, very similar to that of the ID4. The big difference is being a larger blacked out area here below the badge and the rear lights, as well as an absence of kind of the almost faux exhaust outlets that we see on the ID4 as well. You also, of course, have the white badges here that are becoming somewhat of a signature of the ID line. Of course, the reason you're buying the ID6 is because you want to carry more stuff and more people than you could in an ID4. So let's talk about that. This is a three row, six passenger vehicle. Here behind the third row, you have 202 liters of space. If you lift up this board down here, you get a little extra space, space down below. If you fold down the rear seats, as well as the front seats, you can get up to 1,820 liters of space. Unsurprisingly, the interior of the ID6 is essentially identical to that of the ID4. I enjoyed the simple overall design, complemented by cool touches like the patterns on the dashboard, the ID logo on the center armrest, and the pedals with pause and play symbols. The design and placement of the transmission knob took some getting used to, but now I think it's a great piece of design. Another fun touch was the way the cabin lights would react to your gear changes, giving you another indicator of your gear selection. Of course, it's not all rainbows and lollipops, since the ID6 also inherits the ID4's quirks. The touch capacitive buttons were somewhat annoying, often requiring us to take our eyes off the road to make sure we were hitting the right one. And that's before we start talking about what they've done to the windows. Someone decided it would be a good idea to delete the driver's rear window switches. Lowering the rear windows from the driver's seat now requires long pressing a touch sensitive button labeled rear. It makes for an ever so slightly less cluttered cabin and probably saves VW a tiny amount of money, but at the cost of usability. The center screen in the ID6 is quite respectable in terms of size, however I'm not in love with the UI. I have driven of this car quite a bit at this point, and I have to say that I 
often find myself having trouble finding commonly used features in the menu. One thing I do like about it, however, is this blue square here on the left that acts as your home button. It's well placed and the fact that it's always there means you can very easily go straight back to your home or back to a previous page very easily, very useful. Rear seat passengers in the ID6 enjoy a very respectable amount of both head and leg room, as well as two charging ports. This high spec car also came with heated seats. The third row, however, is quite small with very little leg room, no air conditioning outlets, and no charging ports. Better to leave that for small kids only. In the ultra-competitive Chinese EV market, I have to say that the interior material qualities of the VW ID6 don't quite match up to some of its competitors, including some of its Chinese competitors. Don't get me wrong, the fit and finish is quite nice in this vehicle, better than many Chinese cars, but the material qualities itself, well, there's more hard plastics and less soft touch than I would expect at this price point. The powertrain and battery specs for the ID6 are the exact same as the ones available on the Chinese market ID4. That means there are three motor options and two battery options. Entry level models come with a single rear mounted electric motor making 132 kilowatts and 310 newton meters of torque. That's 180 horsepower and 230 pound feet. From there, you can step up to a more powerful single motor that makes 150 kilowatts or 204 horsepower, but with the same torque figure. Finally, the range topping Prime model comes with a front and rear mounted motor for a total of 230 kilowatts and 472 newton meters of torque, aka 313 horsepower and 350 pound feet. As for battery packs, the entry level model is only available with the 63.2 kilowatt hour pack and an NEDC range of 436 kilometers. Meanwhile, the more powerful single motor model and the dual motor prime model both come with an 83.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, giving them an NEDC range of 588 and 510 kilometers, respectively. Keep in mind that those are gross battery capacity, not net. This prime dual motor version of the ID6 has a 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time of 6.6 .6 seconds, hardly making it the fastest electric vehicle available on the market today. Still, the driving feel is quite good. It manages to achieve a level of German solidity that local cars especially very much struggle to achieve. It feels quite good over the road, especially over bumps. The steering feel is quite light, even in sport mode, but there is a little bit more feedback, I will say, than some of its local rivals and even some foreign rivals. Overall, a good driving feel, but nothing particularly special. So what then does the ID6 have that can set it apart from its rivals in the ultra competitive Chinese EV market? To be honest, not very much. There's cars this same size available that are faster, cheaper, and have as good or even sometimes better material quality. The driving feel is a little bit better than many, many of its competitors, especially when it comes to the solidity of the suspension, as I mentioned, and the driving feel, the steering feel. But is that enough? I'm honestly not sure. It's a good car, but I don't know if good is good enough in the Chinese market. The ID line and the push towards full electrification are obviously vital to Volkswagen as a company, not only to its bottom line, but also to its future as an automaker. It makes sense then that since the debut of the ID4, they will continue to expand the ID line first down with the smaller ID3, then up, so to speak, with the larger cars like the ID6. As to when this car will leave the China market and expand to other markets, we honestly don't know specifically, but it seems pretty much inevitable. All right, thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook, links in the description below. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.